Hey, uh, Shalom, Shalom, Kwame Ashala, Barakati, how a Barakati, how a shy, Barakati, how a Barakati, how a shy, Barakati, how a Barakati, how shy. All praises, glory, and honor do unto Yahweh Bashem Yoshai, Bahashem Raka HaKladash, the Blanas to the apostles, elders, and also the elder bishops of uh, GMS. To you I say Shalom, and uh, Shalom unto the hopeful elect, Kwame Ashala, and Abba Baba. Um, I found this clip here on MSN.com. It's about five minutes and change. I'll post a link in the description during post-production, Lord willing. Uh, it's from Fox News, and it says, Gun violence is this our America? In the wake of the assassination attempt of former President Donald Trump, our panel has a heated debate about if this example of gun violence is a depiction of American culture as a whole. And, um, you know, looking at the debate here, the this little debate that they had, um, these people, they gave their opinions and, and thoughts about... Um, about the gun violence and uh, what what took place during the Trump rally on uh, the attempted assassination, you know some some agree that uh, this is a depiction of American culture and some disagree. But when you look at this through a biblical lens, um, that whole that whole situation it it is, you know, um, it, it is a depiction of uh, American culture as a whole. Um, because if you were to go into the book of Nahum, uh, chapter 3, verse 1, what does it say, man? It says pretty much, woe to the bloody city. <laughs> right? Let me, as a matter of fact, let me pull that up. I have it here. This is uh, Nahum, chapter 3, verse 1. And by the way, Nineveh is America in the spirit. Um, you have Rome. You have Sodom and Gomorrah. You have Egypt. You have Babylon, Nineveh. Um, that's America. Right, right. America, uh, that you know, America is is those previous nations in the spirit. Okay, so so America today's America is functioning just like Nineveh. Now it says here, "Woe to the bloody city! It is all full of lies and robbery. The prey departeth not." Beautiful, you hear that? So, woe to the bloody city! You know what woe means? Woe means destruction. So, woe is coming to this bloody city. Now, what was America founded on? Rape, robbery, and murder. Man, look at your look at your previous presidents that came into office. You know, some of them have lost their lives. Some of them were killed by the gun, the sword. You have uh, JFK, John F. Kennedy. You also had Abraham Lincoln. They were all murdered, man. <laughs> right? And then now you have uh, uh, the former president, Donald Trump, getting shot, man, right, at his own rally. So, so that shows you violence. And also, this land was stolen, right? It was stolen from the Native Americans and the Seminole Indians and the other indigenous tribes. And also, uh, guess what? You, you, you Negroes, starting with Judah, the southern kingdom, starting with Judah, uh, you you were brought over here against your will, and you were forced to work on these plantations, man. You were put into slavery, right? So so yes, the scripture is on point. Woe to the bloody city! It's full of blood, rape, robbery, and murder. It is all full of lies and robbery. And and a lot of people, like Donald Trump, they're lying and they're telling you that this is not us. He made that statement, and that's what they go into. You know, after after um. After he almost died, he came out and said, you know, this is not us. You know, what took place at that rally, this is not America. And that's a goddamn lie, man. That's a goddamn lie. And we know that this devil, starting with the so-called white man, and even going into what Trump said, but starting with the so-called white man, he's in denial. And, and, and it's true. You're going to see that in this video if you were to go watch it. Um... It's Esau speaking up and saying, you know, uh, this is not us. You know, what took place at that rally? You know, American culture is beautiful. Uh, you know, it isn't violent, like you say. He's in total denial, and he doesn't want anybody to find out and know what he's all about. Right? But the scripture says the wicked are estranged from the womb. They go about speaking lies when they be born. Roughly paraphrasing. I'm going to get that precept. So, so you devils, man, it doesn't matter how much you lie. You know, you cannot change who you are. You were set up to be that vessel of dishonor. 
You were set up to be a murderer. And in fact, Esau, Edom, your blessing is a sword. Right? You're the sword. But don't sit there and tell me that you're not a bloody man, that what you've built up in this place didn't all come from blood money. It didn't come from lies. It didn't come from robbery. It didn't come from rape. That's a fucking lie. Right? And that's why it says woe unto the bloody city. Because of all the wickedness, man. Woe unto this place. And this place is going to get destruction. Perfect destruction. Through thermonuclear destruction and through Yahweh Shai coming back, destroying this place. Casting down every stone on this soil. Every bit of this land is going to be burnt up by fire. Do you believe that? Well, I do because it's written in the scriptures. And it's going to happen, man. It's going to happen. And we're seeing America deteriorate. It's always going down. It's getting worse and it's getting worse and it's getting worse. And it doesn't look like it's going to get better. Right? America is unstable, man. Very unstable. Um, so anyways, it says here, verse 2, The noise of a whip and the noise of the rattling of the wheels and of the prancing horses and of the jumping chariots. And that's true. And that, that was a busy ancient city. You know, that's all you heard because it was business. Traffic was going on. People were trading. People were doing business. People were going to war. People were moving uh, and going about their day to day. And that's America. You know, you know the, the rattling of the wheels are the modern day cars and trucks and buses. Moving freight. Businesses. People going to work. People going to school. Right? It's noisy as hell. And this place is a place of business, man. Why do you think they built these highways? Why do you think they built the QEW? The Queen's Way. Right? It's for traffic. Why do you think they give you the traffic report? It's not because they want to make your life easier. It's because you slaves need to go to work. <laughs> so they can tax your dumb asses. I gotta get to work. Right? Right? Come on, man. So it's a busy place. It's all about traffic. It's all about commerce. It wasn't to make your lives better. It's to keep you down and to tax you more, to put you to go to work so you can build this place up and keep it running. Right? Verse 3, The horseman lifteth up both the bright sword and the glittering spear, and there is a multitude of slain and a great number of carcasses, and there is none end of their corpses. They stumble upon their corpses. Yeah, and that's going to happen to America, man. You know, that sword, that glittering spear, that sword, a multitude of slain. How is that going to be done? By the ICBM. Right? It's gonna, that's going to that's gonna slay a multitude of people. That's how you're going to get a great number of carcasses, man, and corpses lying all over the ground. Through thermal nuclear destruction, man. And that's what's gonna that's what's gonna happen over here in America. You may not see it now, but that's right, because scripture says pride goeth before destruction and a haughty look before a fall. Right now we're in your pride. But soon all that pride is gonna run out, and then that's the, that's when we're gonna see your ruin after your pride is done. After you guys get humbled and you lose everything, then that's when you're gonna go down and, and get and get judged. But anyways, that's all that I have uh, to read from here. But um, yeah, man, um, it, it's 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 pretty self-explanatory when you go into this, especially when you start from the top. Woe to the bloody city! It is all full of lies, right? So so this town um, w was built upon uh, blood and extortion. You know, you 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 so-called white people, man, you built this town. You made yourself lord of it. You know what you call that? A de facto government. Right? <laughs> Which is an illegitimate government. You said, okay, um, I, I rule this place now. You just go into somebody's home. You kick the door down. You go into somebody's home. And you just place your pictures on the wall. And say, oh, this is my house. That's what you devils did. I live here now. <laughs> to the natives, man. Right? So you made yourself lord of this place. You established it. Right? By blood. And you made it. You made yourself a really a royal seat. You people are like royalty. That's why you call yourselves white people. You know what that means? Pure. You're calling yourself pure people. Pure human. 
And then you call us the dark nations, man. Black people. Like we're nothing. So you, you set yourself up a royal seat when you're not really royalty. Scripture says, I have seen servants upon horses and, and uh, princes walking. Matter, matter of fact, let me see that. Servants upon horses. I'll get the precept. Servants. I butchered that. Upon horses. All right. Yeah, Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 7. I have seen servants upon horses and prince walking as servants upon the earth. That's right. Hey, man. So, yeah, the servants are upon the horses. You're really a servant, man. You're a servant. Man, you're in that same spirit as Nebuchadnezzar, man. I'm going to just say that. I'm thinking about Daniel chapter 4, verse 30. Wasn't he the one that said, you know, oh, is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom? He said all that. I'm the I'm the man. I did all of this. When really it was the Lord that put you in power. Because the scripture says in Job 9, 24, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Man, the Lord helped you. Matter of fact, let me get that. Daniel, but you're really a servant, Mr. So-called white man. You other nations, you're really servants. And the real princes, which are you Israelites, right now you're not in a very high position, a royal position right now. You're, you're actually brought low. But that's all going to change. Going into Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter, and the 7th verse. But anyways, let me get this. This is uh, Daniel, chapter 4, verse 30. The proud king, Nebuchadnezzar. Right, And this is Babylon all over again. And Nebuchadnezzar represents your rulers, your presidents. And they don't give a damn about you so-called blacks. And they never had your best interest. All right? Never had your damn in best interest. So why, why, why are you voting, man? You shouldn't be voting for these people. You shouldn't be voting for a person like Trump. Trump ha does not have your best interest. Especially towards uh, the so-called black man. Well, really all the tribes, but mainly the so-called black man. Man, Donald Trump is a white supremacist, man. And time and time again, he has shown that he doesn't like you so-called blacks, man. Making statements, we need more black jobs. What the fuck is a black job? See how, you see, you see this devil, man? We need more black jobs. You know what he, you know what that means. He wants you to work in factories and just be a fucking loser, man. Excuse my language. Also, he, he also made another statement. I don't like black men working for me. I don't want them working in my companies. You know why? Because they're lazy. <laughs> so he doesn't like you so-called blacks, man. <laughs> he does not like you. He doesn't have your best interests. And that's just like Nebuchadnezzar. He's coming in that same spirit. So this is uh, Daniel chapter 4, verse 30. Now it says here, the king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power? And for the honor of my majesty? That's right. <laughs> he created his own royal seat through rape, robbery, and murder by oppressing the children of Israel, man. All right? And that shows you the pride, man, off of this guy. Fucking proud, just like you devils, man. You said, nope, I did it myself. I established my own royal seat. I'm a god, I'm a king. I'm the man. I'm the shit. But guess what? He lost his kingdom. And really, Nebuchadnezzar was turned into a beast. The Lord humbled his ass throughout his, you know, his reign of terror. I'm not even going to say rule. I'm going to say a reign of terror, man. Because this guy was a criminal, man. Right? He was a criminal. An oppressor. But yeah, um, his kingdom went down and Babylon's kingdom is going to go down. For sure. <laughs> for show, sure. for show, sure. for show, sure. for show. Sure. All right. Now let me get um. Let me get Romans, because they like to say, "Oh, this is not us." But the Lord, He made you that way. He made you as the sword. He made you as the sword. He made you of that uh, vessel of dishonor, and the Lord can do whatever He wants. And you want to change that. You see, you Edomites, man, you're trying to make yourselves a vessel of honor when really that's not who you are in the spirit. You're that vessel of dishonor. 
As a matter of fact, let me prove that. This is, um, that's why he's going to go out there. That's why he went out there and made statements. You know, this is not us. You know, uh, that's not a great depiction of how America is. And he's really talking about white people. He ain't talking about the whole nation. He's talking about white people. So this is Romans uh, chapter 9, verse 21. And it says here, Hath not the potter power over the clay? Who's the potter? The potter is the Lord, Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh really the Heavenly Father. Okay, and He's your maker. Matter of fact, before I read on, let me get Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Because it says, I believe it goes off by saying, For we are His workmanship. That's uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Hamashiach Yahweh Shai unto good works, which the Most High hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So I just wanted to bring this out. Obviously, this pertains to you Israelites. Um, you know, we, we are the workmanship of uh, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, right? And the reason why it says Yahweh Shai as well unto good works is because um, everything was created by him and for him. And it was all sanctioned by the Heavenly Father. His name is Yahweh. Right? So, so yes, we are His workmanship. We are Yahweh Bashin Oshai's workmanship. He is our creator. And He created us to be a certain way. You Israelites, you're supposed to walk in the law, statutes, and commandments, serving Yahweh Bashin Oshai with all your heart. But now, when you look at it uh, through the wicked, the wicked, you're really not created to serve the Lord. On the right hand side. You're really to serve them on the left. And and that's what you don't accept. You don't accept that. You don't accept that. Now let's get um, Romans chapter 9. Let's go back here. Let's go to Romans uh, 9 and 21. And it says. Hath not the potter power over the clay? And we are the clay. All right, We are the clay. Of the same lump. To make one vessel unto honor. And another unto dishonor. Hmm. So there's two types of vessels. One honorable and one dishonorable. And who's honorable? Yahshua Allah. He is the prince of the power. The prince of God. The sons of God. Which are you Israelites. Why? Because you were given the law, statutes, and commandments. Man, go back to Exodus, the 24th chapter. We were given the covenant. We made a contract with the Heavenly Father. The other nations weren't there. It was just us. So we're that vessel of honor. Verse 22. What if the Most High, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? And you are those vessels of wrath fitted to destruction, starting with the so-called white man. And that's why we read in Nahum chapter 3, verse 1, it said, Woe unto the bloody city. Woe is destruction. And that's how the Lord is going to show his wrath through destruction. And you devils, man, you're showing time and time again, you're fit for destruction. You're fit to be destroyed by all your wicked deeds, everything that you've done. And they talk about it. You know, they bring out some little historical facts showing all the things you've done. Going back to the 1800s, man, look at your presidents. Why do you put so much, so much effort into protecting your, your, uh, your presidents, man, you created you created a new branch of law enforcement called the Secret Service. You 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 make such an effort to protect your presidents. That shows how bloody you are. And and why is that? Because of what happened in the past with Abraham Lincoln, uh, what uh, uh, John F. Kennedy. The list goes on, man. So yeah, man, come on, come on, man. That's you devils. You're fitted to destruction. Because why? You rule with the sword. And I want to get that. I want to get that. Actually, let's go into uh, Genesis, the 27th chapter. 27 and uh, 37. Because that was your blessing. It's the so-called white man. The sword. The sword. Esau. I, Joshua, wasted away is he. That's your blessing. This is Genesis chapter 27, verse 37. Let's get it. <laughs> Let's start at 36. Let's see how Esau got played. And he said, Is not he rightly named Jacob? 
for he has supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright, and behold, now he hath taken away my blessing. And he said, Hast thou not reserved a blessing for me? That's right, because you got played, not tricked again, twice. Got tricked twice. And that's how the Lord set it up in the spirit. He didn't want you to have the birthright. He didn't want you to have the blessing of the firstborn. So you got played, man. And the Lord set that up. And you cannot change that. And you cannot get it back. And in the spirit, that's why he made that statement. Donald Trump. You know, this is not us. This is not an example of us. American culture. You know, we don't live by the sword. Fuck out of here, man. So this is verse 37. And Isaac answered and said unto Esau, Behold, I have made him thy Lord, and all his brethren have I given to him for servants. And with corn and wine have I sustained him, and what shall I do now unto thee, my son? And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also. O oh, my father, and Esau lifted up his voice and wept. So he cried for a blessing. And he realized how important that blessing was. Right? Blessing that gets passed down from your father. That's very important to be blessed by somebody. Especially your father. And especially if he's a holy man, a righteous man. Verse 39. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven from above. That's right. So you're going to be living in luxury, man. You get to live on the best places. You get to have the best of all things, carnally wise, right? Uh, verse four, 40, and it says, And by thy sword shall thou live. That's right. So you're going to live by the sword. You're going to live by the gun. You're going to live by the military. You know what that means? Killing and murdering people. That, that also goes for, for self-defense as well. And also killing people. And getting rich and getting powerful. You're going to live by the sword. That's how you're going to make a living. And that's, that's, that's America, man. Sports, drugs, entertainment. Rape, robbery, and murder. Because when you came over here, that's how you lived. Right? And they said it. They said it, man. Just go into American history. It's very bloody, very violent. Putting people into slavery, genocide of the Native Americans, stealing their land, putting them on reserves, sundown towns that affected you, Judites, and all also you other nations that lived over here. I believe in the in the early nineteenth century, late eighteenth century as well. I believe a lot of sundown towns, man. A lot of you, a lot of you Moabites. When you came over here to live a better life, they burnt down your towns too, man. Because they were jealous of you for building up a nice community and making money and being successful. So, so man, you devils, man, you have a lot to pay for. You have a lot to pay for, man. I have the book about sundown towns, man. Brother Dawad gave me that book. Man, that book was very graphic, man. Every state had a sundown town. And those were just the common Israelites, the com I mean the common Edomites, not Israelites, the common folk, the common Edomites, your everyday Joe six pack. Shows how bloody uh, how they were, you know, how bloody they were. Man. But anyways, it says, And shall serve thy brother, and it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion, that thou shalt break. His yoke from off thy neck. And yeah, that happened during the time of when King David was ruling, I believe. You know, all that, that happened. Verse 41, And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, The days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then will I slay my brother Jacob. And he has a perpetual hatred. And that perpetual hatred still runs deep to this very day. That hatred that the so-called white man has for the tribes is really ancient, man. Goes back to the book of Genesis. You know what Genesis means? The beginning. <laughs> Goes back to the very beginning. And that was in the ancient world, man. So this is an ancient hatred. And that can't change, man. It can't change. 
until Yahweh Shai comes back. It ain't gonna change. And you and you tribes, man, you believe this BS. You believe this BS that's coming out of President Donald Trump's mouth and these people's mouths that you see here. Oh, that's not us. Oh, you know, I'm a gun owner. This guy said that. This this Jake that you see here on the screen, so-called Jake, he's like, I'm a gun owner too. So you know he's juiced in, he's plugged in, he's down with America. You know why? Because he trusts in oppression. Didn't 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 say that? In uh what what is it? Isaiah the thirtieth chapter? Trust not in oppression? Yeah, that's I Isaiah thirty. Isaiah thirty, uh I'll pull it up. Trust not in oppression. Trust not an oppression. Hold on. Isaiah thirty. Trust in oppression. There you go. I want to get that one first. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 12. Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because you despise this word and trust in oppression and perverseness and stay thereon, therefore this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall, swelling out in a high wall, whose breaking cometh suddenly at an instant. <laughs> yeah. And you're going to go down right with America, man, in an instant. And they shall say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh, man, for your ass. And that's because you have trust in oppression, man, and you really despise this word. You know, our people, they despise this word to the point they'd rather trust the devil. They'd rather trust in this two-party demonic system. They'd rather trust in Donald J. Trump, a fucking racist, man, and a white supremacist. Okay? <laughs> he, has, he has shown time and time again he doesn't like... You, you, uh, you Judites, man. You so-called Negroes, man. He <laughs> showed that so many times. But you want to vote for him. And perverseness, man. Because America is perverse. It's backwards. It's disgusting. Full of sodomites. You're voting for this devil to, to, to uh, make sodomites rule over you. You know, like, like all that shit. You know, come on, man. I don't even have to go into detail about that. Therefore, this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall, swelling out in a high wall, whose breaking cometh suddenly at an instant. And he shall break it as the breaking of the potter's vessels that is broken in pieces. He shall not spare, so that there shall not be found in the bursting of it assured, assured to take fire from the hearth or to take water withal out of the pit. That's right. Total destruction, total annihilation. Everything's broken. All right. All right, and that's what you're going to get when you trust in oppression. Let me get the next one. Let's go back here. Let's get Psalm 62, verse 10. Trust not in oppression and become not vain in robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. And that's true. You know, do not trust in oppression. But our people, they do trust in oppression. And, you know, it's, it's, become, it's, it's become so sad, man, that they've become so vain in robbery. I'm talking about our people because, you know, our people, they, they, they do have, a, have, they do, they, they have t actually taken apart and followed the ways uh, of the so-called white man when it comes to, uh, when it comes to using the sword and ruling with the sword, right? They, they have, they have, they have went down the path of Cain, <laughs> our people, um, and, and a lot of our people, you know, they've become rich. Due to them uh, raping, murdering, and robbing uh, others and their own people, right? And they have increased in riches, and because they have increased in riches, they've forgotten the Lord. They don't trust in the Lord, and now they trust in this system. They trust in America because they believe that that's the way to go, right? So yeah, um, you know, if riches increase, set not your heart upon them. And uh, they have set their heart upon them, and that's why um, they vote. Um, they don't care about the Lord. They put the Bible behind them. They don't care if they're an Israelite. They don't care if they're a royal people. Because they're living good in Babylon the Great in America. All right. So I also want to get um, I also want to get uh, Isaiah chapter ten verse fifteen because 
Um, you Edomites, uh, you were set up to be the sword. The Lord set you up to be a killing instrument. And that's really for punishment. You were set up to punish the children of Israel as well. Um, so that's just how the Lord made you. So this goes with uh, Romans 9 and uh, 21 on down. I forgot to bring this out earlier. So this is Isaiah chapter 10, verse 15. And it says here, Shall the axe boast itself against him that he with therewith? Or shall the psalm might magnify itself? I don't know. I couldn't see that, man. Let me just read that again. Or shall the saw magnify itself against him that shaketh it, as if the rod should take itself against them that lifteth it up? Or as if the staff should lift it, lift up itself as if it were no wood? So yeah, um, he created you to be the axe, right? And and you're in his hand. You're not, you're not, uh, you're not doing all the hewing and and chopping down and killing on your own behalf. The Lord is using you as an axe, as that uh, killing instrument. So. Let me just get something. Just for the sake of time, go to the fifth verse. So, this is what I really wanted to start at. Sorry, this is Isaiah chapter 10, verse 5. O Assyrian, the rod of mine anger, and the staff in their hand is my indignation. That's right. So you're, you're in the same spirit of the Assyrian. You're the modern-day Assyrian. And yeah, you're the rod of the Lord's anger, right? So, so He's using you to uh, judge the nation of Israel and also to punish these other nations. Verse six: I will send him against a hypocritical nation and against the people of my wrath. Will I give him a charge to take the spoil and to take the prey and to tread them down like the mire of the streets? And that happened. <laughs> he used you to take us down. Right, and we were we were given into your hand, right? We were given into your hand. You you had us in slavery, and you still have us now, right? You're over us. You're ruling, right? So so really, um, you're you're the rod of, of the Lord's anger. That's what you're set up to be. You're set up to be the sword. You're set up to be the gun. You're a killer. You're a murderer. All right. So that's just more proof. That's what I really wanted. I went down and I went to 15, I believe. I think it was 15. I really wanted to start at uh, verse 5. But yeah, um, I could go on and on. I could go on and on. So with that, I just want to give all praises, glory, and honor. Do unto Yahweh, Bahashem Yavashai, Bahashem Rakaha Kodash. And double honors to the apostles and elders of great millstone of GMS. To you I say shalom and shalom unto the hopeful elect. Kwame Yashal and Abad Babal. Shalom.